Hi everyone, my name is Maria and welcome back to Vixen's Victorious. I am by myself, uh, yet again. Uh, hopefully we can get mom in next week. Uh, but for this week I'm going to go through the 2020 fixture and then I'm going to go through the Ishua McMahon statue, which is very exciting. Um, just can't wait for next year to happen. Um, very excited for what Vixen has to come because on paper we are a very strong team. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see how theory works in Prague. Uh, so on with the fixture. On round one, uh, we play against the Firebirds away on Saturday, the tw uh, March 27th at 2 p.m. at Nissan Arena. Um, I don't know, it's sort of like a little rivalry uh, against the Firebirds. I know from like l like this season, well, that was like our first win against the Firebirds at Nissan Arena. And uh, we we just seem to play well in this arena. I don't know what it is, but we just um just seems to be one of our where we just play our best for some reason. Uh, we won the grand final there, got our first win there, so it just I don't know. Just happened to play well there. Round two was also to away. It's uh against uh S uh New South Wales Swifts or my sister Sydney Swifts. Um, that's on Saturday, on uh, April 2nd at 5pm at Ken Raswell Arena. Uh, round 3 is our first home game for the season. Uh, that is on a Saturday, April 9th at 5pm at John Kane Arena. Uh, round 4 is against West Coast Fever. Uh, that is on Thursday, April 12th at 6pm at John Kane Arena. That is, that's going to be a good home game. Um, and then around five, we are away, playing uh, against Sunshine Coast Lightning, who we got our second win off. Um, I was actually the liar for that win, so that was pretty epic. Uh, so that's on Saturday, this April sixteenth at five p.m. at USC Stadium. Um, at round six, we play the Thunderbirds at home. Uh, so that will be on Saturday, the April twenty third at seven p.m. At John Kane Arena. All very exciting. All very exciting. Um, on round seven, uh, we play the uh, Magpies home. It's a good derby. I love it. Uh, sadly, last season, uh, every time we played the Melbourne Derby, uh, COVID happened and had to be played in the state. Uh, hopefully, we can go and watch one this time. Um, but yeah. So that's on Sunday, May 1, uh, at 4pm at Drunken Arena. And then, uh, around 8, we are home against the Firebirds. That's Saturday, uh, May 7th, 5pm at Drunken Arena. Around 9, we're away. We play Giants Netball for the second time at Saturday, uh, May 4th at 7pm at Ken Roswell Arena. And then round 10, we are away uh, uh, on Tuesday, uh, May 17th at 8pm at RAC Arena. Round 11, we play against New South Wales Swifts at home Saturday, May 21th at 7pm at John Kane Arena. Uh, round 12, we are at home Saturday, sorry, Sunday, uh, May 29th at 2pm at John Kane Arena. And then... Uh, round 13, we play Thunderbirds, Saturday, uh, June 4th at 7pm at Adelaide Entertainment Centre. And then our last game for the season, like it was meant to be for this season, is against Collingwood. It is in a way, Monday, June 13th at 1pm. I would definitely be watching that. Uh, so the sad thing is, I now work Saturdays and Sundays and have to be at work by five uh so uh, a little bit depressing but you know that's how life works sometimes but I'll, I'll still watch as many games as possible um so like but yeah that's what our fixture looks like um you know yeah i'm just very excited i don't know I, I just feel like i like playing the five odds i always feel like uh just playing at Nissan Arena is always great for us. Um, as we learnt in these last two years, we just we should win that. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, hopefully we do uh, 
go into the top four this season. Um, I, this season was pretty tough. We had patches of greatness, but it wasn't consistent enough. It was, I think, at the end, just our consistency that killed us because we are a great team, but it's just we just didn't do it. We just didn't produce greatness often enough. We didn't do it at a consistent rate. Um, and I feel like that happens when you lose a lot of experience. Uh, like we lost uh, Tegan Phillips, uh, Catelyn Twaits, and to retirement, and then we lost uh, Watson to a foot injury. And once you lose all the experience in the attacking line, you have to form new like relationships and friendships on court, which isn't always easy to do. Uh, but I, I think we'll do good uh, this season. And now, in other exciting news, Shira McMahon to be immortalized in bronze. Uh, this is very exciting. I'll read you guys the article. So Australian netball icon Shira McMahon is set to be immortalized in bronze thanks to the Victorian government celebrating female sporting icons initi initiative. And the statues for Equality Project, a global movement working on balanced gender and uh, racial presentation in public statues. Uh, so McMahon will be just the fifth woman uh, and the first Victorian woman, go Victoria, uh, to receive the honour, uh, joining Olympians Betty Cut Herbert, uh, Shirley Sickland, and Nova Perez, an AFLW star, Taylor Harris. Uh, the statue will be produced uh, by renowned sculpture artist Jill and Mark, and will stand tall in front of Victorian's home of netball, John Kane Arena. I can't wait to see the statue. I can't wait to just go out the netball and be like, hey, that's Shira McMahon. That's, that's going to be a very exciting moment. Not just for netball, but just for women in sport, you know, just for equality. So that is going to be very exciting. I can't wait for that to happen. Um, on International Women's Day this year, Netball Victoria launched a campaign advocating for greater recognition of female sporting icons in our community. Uh, women's existing sports statues, Melbourne's in existing uh, sporting statues include 29 men, only 4 women, and uh, 3 horses. Uh, so today's announcement represented a step forward in addressing the imbalance, which is just great. Um, I, I love it when women get just a little bit of the limelight. Um, we deserve more. Not more than men, but like we deserve to have as much as men. And um, I really like that this is happening. Uh, McMahon's highly decorated career spanned close to 15 years, featuring over 200 games and six premierships for the Melbourne Phoenix and Vixens, and 2018. Uh, sorry, 118 games for Australia following her international debut in 1998. Uh, the two-time Commonwealth Games medalist and two-time World Cup champion captained her country on 12 occasions, which is brilliant. That's the highest honour ever. Uh, and was the first athlete from a team sport to carry the Australian flag at a Commonwealth Games opening ceremony in Delhi 2010. That is very exciting. That That is nice. She's always... She's just a star in every sense of the word. Uh, following uh, her retirement, McMahon moved into coaching, taking on a specialist coaching role for the Melbourne Vixens in 2014. Uh, she was elevated to assistant coach in 2019 and joined the Orange and Diamonds as a specialist coach for the Constellation Cup in March this year, which is nice. Um... Although her tenure with the Vixens ended this year, joining Cricket Victoria as head coach of female cricket, McMahon's contribu contribution to the sport has been invaluable. And netball Victoria CEO Rosie King highlighted the importance of this honour, not only not only McMahon, but aspiring netballers and girls and women across the country. And that is so true. So true. Um, and yeah, that's it. That, that That's just, as a, a woman that plays sport, unlike a professional squash player, there's always heaps of mention of men everywhere. And um, I, I feel like, especially growing up, I never really, like, Sharp Herber was a hero to me. But, like, whenever it came, because I really like cricket and AFL, and there was never really, I didn't know what women's cricket was a thing as a child. And 
obviously AFLW wasn't even a thing back in like the early 2000s when I was growing up. Um, so I, I kind of had to look up to men. Uh, but now with, um, now there's more women participation, there's women's cricket is, is more of a known thing now, AFLW is a thing, and I feel like now girls can actually look up to other females. And that's really exciting. Um, so yeah, it's like obviously with Shara Prava and then my sporting idols are also to Stuart Broad and Will Minson because like I love ten I love uh cricket and AFL and they're always dominated by men. But now we have women coming through and it's gonna be an exciting time for young females to actually look up to other to other females and that is it's an exciting time to be alive and I really enjoy where this is going. Um yeah, I I really I really like the future of women's sport. And uh, it's it's gonna be great. Um, anyway, that is it for me for this week. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below some of your thoughts on the fixture or of Shara McMahon's uh, statue. Uh love her. Uh never gonna watch her play. But but like as you read she's getting it for a reason. And uh, yeah, please subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when we upload. And uh, yeah, that will be it for me for this week. And until next time, bye guys.